Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna and on this channel I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today we are making some mango wine. I've never made any kind of wine before in the past. It's not going to be a high alcohol content. It's really just fermented mango drink. Uh, it, it'll have a little bit of a alcohol content from what I have seen it's roughly about 5%. So we are just gonna go ahead and get started on doing this. What we need is one part of sugar or honey, one part mangoes to four parts of water. So I have the mangoes here, they're nice and overly ripe. And so we're gonna get started on getting these peeled and cut up. So basically I have this jug here, it's a one gallon jug, and I have on top of it, I have a little plug with an airlock. I've never tried these types of airlocks before, but this is the first time I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna bring you along and show you what we're doing here. I wanna make sure that all of this fits in this one gallon jug, and I wanna make sure that there's enough room in there to leave space for any kind of bubbling over or anything like that. So I'm just gonna do three quarts of liquid in here. So I'm gonna do three quarts of liquid, and so that's gonna mean I'm gonna do 24 ounces of mango and 24 ounces by weight of sugar. So let's get started on doing all that. And these mangoes are getting pretty close to being overly ripe. So hopefully we have enough here. We can make this happen. I should have done this last week. Oh yeah, they are good. This one's good in. So the recipe that I am using, I'm kind of adapting to be a bit of my own from a channel called Brew Nourish. It's one that I just came across like in the last week or so. I really like it. I'm gonna go ahead and link her down below. Uh, she has kind of a mixture of English and a different language of um, videos on her channel, and, but she just uh, has very, uh, from the videos that I've seen are very nice and simple and just succinct. And she, I like that she shows errors as well as just um, successes. I, I try to do that as well. So I'm doing this off of her video. I'm going to link that down below so you guys can check out that one. I'm kind of adapting it and doing a little bit of my own stuff to it. So, but that's where I got the uh, general idea from. So. Okay, so we got our mango. And next what we're going to do is we're going to weigh out the sugar. And in the recipe she used honey, but I don't want to use that much honey, so I'm just going to go ahead and use some organic cane sugar and we're just going to substitute that in. And we're going to get it melted with all the water. Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil about a quarter of the water that I'm going to use. I'm going to bring it to a boil so that I can melt the sugar, kind of like when you're making kombucha basically. And so I'm going to get all the sugar melted and then I'm going to add the rest of the cold water to it and hopefully that should balance out to be about room temperature to body temperature, somewhere in that range. So while we're waiting for the water to warm up, we're going to go ahead and we are going to puree this mango that we have here. You don't have to puree it. Uh, the video that I was watching, the one that I'm going to link down below, she just did the chunks of it. but. Um, I just kind of want to do a bang a puree. <laughs> I think it'll work better. I think that it will uh, work faster. And I also just trying to think about trying to get all of those little pieces of mango to go into this little spout is not something I care to do. So I'm just gonna puree it to make my life a little easier. So now that the sugar water has completely melted, all the sugar is dissolved in there, I didn't have to bring it up quite to a boil. I just was stirring it and kind of let it come up to temperature. It's hot, but it's not boiling, so. And the jar that we're using is clean. I cleaned it to the best of my ability. It's not like super sanitized. I know a lot of people that do, do wine making and things like that, like they use like all kinds of crazy chemicals and things. I'm not about that. This is just wild, wild yeast fermentation, that's it. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add in the rest of the water. Okay, there we go. I'm kind of having second thoughts as to whether or not this is gonna actually fit in here. Let 
I, I need to take its temperature. No, we're good. Okay, perfect. It looks really funny inside of the butt, the jar. Okay, we'll have we should have enough room. This should be fine. Famous last words, right? to stir it up, really, I don't think, but I'm gonna at least swish it. Okay, there we go. And we're not adding any outside yeast to this whatsoever. We're not adding any kind of, a lot of fermentation, a lot of wine making. They always say you wanna add uh, like some kind of special, I don't even know what it is, some kind of special yeast to it, but that's not what I'm gonna do. So uh, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we are gonna seal this off with an airlock. And I've never used an actual airlock before, but it's pretty self-explanatory. You have the airlock here and there's actually a fill line right here. It says fill line and that's just what you fill it up to. And then, so now that we have it filled with the water, we're gonna put it on top of here, and we have this little stopper, it's like a rubber stopper. You can get the same result as of this if you were to just put a, uh, like a rubber balloon on top. I just don't have a rubber band, but a rubber balloon, and I wanna try this thing out. I've never tried it before. Uh, the video that I watched, she uses like a chopstick and just kind of stirred it several times a day. I'm probably not going to be able to stir it several times a day, but if you have the time to, go for it. I'm probably going to stir it in the morning, the evening, and maybe one more time right before bed. I think that's probably the most that I'll be able to do. So I'm going to bring you along for several of those and I'm going to show you the process as this thing moves along so that we can see kind of the different stages that this wine will, the different stages that it will um, take along the way. So I'm going to make sure to show you every step possible along the way. So I wanted to go ahead and bring you in. This is day, day and a half. So it is not the next morning after we made this, but the one after, and it is really starting to become active. It has filled up this thing. It filled up the airlock. And so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean that out and bring everything back and put it back in the jar, stir it up, and so yeah, this is day and a half. So I just wanted to show you real quick. I got this all cleaned up, but you can see like it's already, I don't know if you can see, but there's lots and lots of bubbles all over the place. This thing is crazy. Super active already after a day and a half. So it's been, it's been, I think probably four days, maybe five from up the exact amount of time right here when, when I, and doing the editing, but I wanted to go ahead and show you. All I did was bring this out to stir it. <laughs> I, I just put this spoon in there and all, literally all I did was just stir it up a little bit and it just like went totally crazy. It was completely, I should have brought you guys along for it, I'm sorry. But it was, it's just been kind of flat and settled like right here since it had overflowed last time. I got it all cleaned up and it sank down a little bit, you know, after I stirred it up with a chopstick and nothing since then. So. I figured I'd be safe and I stirred it up with the spoon and it just like, it was a volcano. I don't know if you can see all around here. Like this was after I stirred it. Like I didn't stir it and then it like, and spill it. Like it just erupted after I stirred it. And it got all up into this thing again, which was totally clear before that. But, so I wanted to show you, be careful with this stuff. Make sure that you're having it inside of a dish that's gonna catch all this stuff. It's been about two weeks since we actually left our uh, mango wine to ferment. It should have only been one week, but life happens. So, now what we're gonna do is see what we got here. It smells alcoholy. 
In an effort to try and make this go a little bit quicker, we are gonna strain it out twice. Once with a larger mesh, once with a smaller mesh. So hopefully this will go a little quicker. The last time we did this, it went totally nuts and like exploded all over the counter. Oh yeah, a bunch of the bubbles gone away. That works for me. Oh, now we're just gonna pour it in here. It's just a delayed reaction. It's going nuts. I don't know if you can see that. It's crazy. So now that we have done the bulk of the, the filtering, now we're gonna go ahead and filter it out one last time into the bottle. So now that we have these all filtered, all we're gonna do is I'm gonna cap these off and I'm gonna put them back in the, well, I'm gonna rinse them off first because I got some sugar on the outside, but we're gonna rinse them off and then we're gonna put them in this box for a day or two and then we're gonna put them in the fridge for a week. And um, I'm not sure what the point is of doing that, but I'm just gonna follow the recipe for the most part. I mean, granted I was only supposed to ferment this for five days, but we're gonna stick, it's fairly close to the recipe. I changed my mind and I remembered that I have this plastic bottle and we can go ahead and we can test out the carbonation on this so we can leave it out of the fridge as long as we can. So this one, the idea behind it, I'm gonna get it nice, nice and close. The idea behind it is, is that as the fermentation takes place and as it, um, as the carbonation builds in here, it's gonna make this hard, harder and harder to squeeze. Like you can see, we can squeeze it just fine, no problem. And so as time goes on, this is gonna be get harder and harder and harder. And so this will be a good tell as to, uh, it'll tell us to go ahead and refrigerate it before these ones could potentially explode. The time has finally come and we are ready to taste test our mango wine. This has been fermenting for quite some time now. It, well, not quite some time now, but it has it fermented at room temperature for five or six days. And then once I actually felt this uh, test bottle, you can see like it just, it won't, there's no give to it whatsoever. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's a bubble in the lid here. It's totally full capacity. So I put it in the fridge and that was about five or six days. And then it's just been in there kind of marinating. I don't know what you'd really call it, but it's been kind of chilling in there ever since then. And it's been, so that's been less than a week and a half. So uh, we are ready to taste test this stuff. I'm just gonna open this just to give it a curious. Well, we'll open that later. Uh, so we got the swing top bottle and you can see right here has a lot of sediment on the bottom lot of sediment so you know if you want to make sure that your your wine is like fully clear doesn't have any sediment in it or any of that kind of stuff you're gonna want to filter it through like a coffee filter or something with a finer mesh strain than what i used so we're just gonna try and open this up so the way that i like to open up these swing top bottles is you have the swing top you have the little bracket i don't know what you call it in the back here and i kind of just put my my finger right on this one and then this one on here, and I kind of push down on the lid here. So I have a little bit of control over as to how fast it opens and it's not just gonna like explode on me. I can easily close it right away and it's just, it's much easier. And, um, it's just, it's worked out pretty well. So let's try and get this thing open. All right. So you can see it's got a pretty fair amount of carbonation to it. So we're just gonna keep at open, getting this open. It's gonna take a little bit of time to actually get it open. So once I get this open, I will bring you back and kind of show you what's going on. I've been trying this for a while. I'm just gonna open it. It's 
very, very, very carbonated. Been trying to get this thing open for at least, at least a half an hour. So, I finally give up and we're gonna give it a taste test. All right, I'm gonna give it a try. Some sparkling mango wine. slight alcohol taste. It's not overpowering. Same thing with the smell. Very slight. When you are doing a wild yeast fermentation like we've done in particularly with making wine, you're only going to get the alcohol content so far. Uh, you know, it's only going to go so high before you need to get yeast if you want to go any further. That's not my, my goal with this. So my goal with this was not to get, I, I'm not trying to make vodka here. <laughs> I was just trying to see what I could get with mango and I was just trying to make a wine and trying to make something fun. So we definitely achieved that. I have no idea what the alcohol content of this is. It's probably, if I had to guess, anywhere between two and 4%. It's certainly not gonna be anything even remotely crazy. If you want it to be a higher alcohol content, you would definitely want to ferment it longer before you bottle it. The purpose of bottling it is basically just to keep it going just a little bit further, uh, but more to develop the carbon dioxide and turning it into the bubbles and the, the fizzy goodness in there. And so if you want it to be higher alcohol content, you're going to want to ferment it longer before you actually put it into bottles. But the trick with that is you can't go too far because then you might, especially with a sweet ferment like this, you're going to risk it uh, molding. It's it's not a huge, huge risk if you have, I don't know put this, if you have some kind of an airlock system on it, it's not going to be as big of a risk. Like we had the airlock system on there. I think next time that I do this, I probably am going to go ahead and let it ferment a little bit longer uh, just because it has definitely had a lot of the sugars taken away from it. It's not as sweet as it as like a mango juice, but it certainly could use a little bit longer, a little bit more of the fermentation process taking place, a little bit stronger of a flavor and a little bit less sugar. I would think it would be ideal, but that's just for me. I'm not a huge sugar fan. So if you like sugar and you're probably gonna really enjoy this, this thing is just, <laughs> it's really good. Don't let any of my running commentary discourage you from trying this as it is because it is delicious. I'm just trying to think of ways that having made it this one time, I'm trying to think of ways that I would like to improve it for my own self and personalize it next time. And I think that's probably what I would end up doing. And that's one of the great things about fermenting and making things your yourself is that you can do that. You can try out recipes and if you think that you would like it to be a different way, you can make it a different way. Like if you want to try this recipe and then you want to change it to whatever you want to do, um, that's the beauty of doing it yourself. You can do whatever the heck you want. <laughs> I definitely hope that you end up trying this recipe. It is so simple. You saw everything that went into it. Uh, you don't have to get the airlock that goes on top of the uh, on top of the bottle. You can use just a balloon and when it inflates to a certain point, you're going to want to poke it several times with a needle and that'll let that'll let the buildup of the carbon dioxide out. Similar principle as the um, as the airlock system. Same as like a pickle pipe or anything like that. Just something that will expand enough. The holes will expand enough to let it out when the gas out when it builds up. But then when it, it contracts, it won't allow any oxygen back in. That's kind of the principle behind it. Uh, so you can totally use just a balloon if you have like a you know the latex balloons and uh, not the not the foil balloons but the, just the latex balloons and you put it on top of the bottle and it'll expand and then you know you want to poke the holes in it so it'll actually let the air out and it won't just fly away so um i hope that you i enjoyed this video i hope you were able to learn something from it and i hope that it gave you inspiration to try fermenting your own wine at home and you can see how super simple it is and how much reward you get from it because it is delicious so if you enjoyed this video go ahead and give it a thumbs up remember to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and we'll see you next time bye